Hi. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I don't like to leave any dye behind. <sighs> and so, I have this fair amount of dye powder. This is left over from many, many projects. And I am just slowly, not so slowly, adding it to a warm dye bath that has a lot of vinegar in it already. Um, this is mostly navy from a rather unfortunate uh, spill on my countertop. But there are a few other colors that are in there as well. Now, what I just did was one of the big don'ts. And that is, I added dry dye powder to a lot of water. Now, Rebecca, you do that all the time. And it's true, I do that all the time when I speckle or I layer dry powders on. But the real reason why you shouldn't do that is that right now in this pan, we've got a lot of color, but we can't tell easily if there's clumps. We can't tell how well these colors are dissolved, which is fine if you don't mind getting catchy color, but the reason why it's better to add water to dye than the other way around is you can get a more uh, consistent mixture. The heat is still off here, and there is a lot of vinegar that's in here, and I'm adding some water now from my pre-soak. Just bringing up the levels. And the pre-soak is cool. Um, so there is no warmth in there currently. And there's a little bit more water I'll add over in a moment. Um, but I just squeezed out the rest of the water from the yarn, and we're going to add that to the dye bath. I believe that there are at least eight tablespoons of um, of vinegar in here right now. But this is a lot of color, and so I am expecting that we will create a fairly deep navy yarn. What I have here is um, some Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn. Um, it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool, non-superwash. And yeah, this is a lot of color in here. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to absorb it all, but you can bet that we will try. I have no idea if the color will clear at all. I mean, it looks like a lot of dye and it is a color that is super pigmented. We might need to get some more yarn, but yeah, let's see like what we can create here. Um, again, it's a lot of dye, but given that when I would speckle with it, it we pretty much just get the navy color. Uh, you know, it wasn't really worth hanging on to it uh, as a mixture. I should make more. And so I just added whatever the amount of vinegar is that I had pulled. And I'm now slowly heating this up. This yarn is non-superwash, as I said, and so I do not want to get to a rolling boil, but I'm going to keep a close eye, and as soon as we start to see some movement, I'm going to reduce the heat, and then we are going to let this sit for 15 minutes. We've been hanging out just below a boil, and there is a lot of color left in here. It's definitely less. A lot has absorbed, uh, but there is a lot left. So, we're bringing in a yarn ball. Right here I have some pre-wetted, not quite pre-soaked, Dyer Supplier Marled Sock Yarn. Um, and, okay, at the first dip in, Honestly, there's less color left than it looks like. Um, so, I mean, that's still definitely color in there. It would stain yarn, but it looks a lot more intense than I think it really is in actuality. It's also looking quite purple. Um, truly, when I went and grabbed that extra skein, I thought that there was a lot, lot more color left.
Yeah, and I thought that we were going to get a lot more color for this other skein. I mean, this is not on Superwash also. This is, I think, 20% nylon, 40% Peruvian Highland wool, 40% merino. Um, and I love it. I love it. It's a beautiful base. It's one that, because it's so gray, it's hard to tell um, with this particular yarn base that it's added color since we aren't super pigmented with what we have added. The final color will show up a lot better once the yarn is dry. And wow, look at that bright pink! You guys! There, that could be our purple pop left. I was sitting here so confused being like, wait, why is our navy leaving this pink behind? That is not normal. You know what's normal? Purple pop. Purple, purple, purple pop. Oh, man. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more water. This is from that pre-wet. Really, I want to allow our yarn to move a little more freely in here. Um, yeah, that pink really isn't going in yet, but everything else besides that pink has absorbed. Um, I really don't want to move it too much. Okay, Rebecca. Um, now I am going to bring this up high. Um, until we are just at a low boil and then I will come back. Oh, <laughs> while we're at it, I just add a good healthy splash. Yeah, maybe two healthy splashes of some more vinegar. Oh dear. Alright, I lost track of time a tiny bit. Only a tiny bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. I'm not sure if it's been like 10 or 15 minutes. Um, clearly we are nice and hot and I think what we're gonna see is that that magenta isn't really budging. Um, and so, ooh, but are we getting color coming out of the navy? I don't know. All right, anyway, I've got the heat off and I'm gonna let this cool completely here in the pan and cross your fingers for me. <laughs> the dye bath has cooled, but it has not cleared. Uh, but let's try washing this yarn. I'm expecting that we will see some pink right away just because when you have pink water and you've got a little sponge in there, you will have some color come up. And yeah, we could get a lot of bleeding. I. This yarn almost looks black. I think it's probably a navy. I don't think I've created saturated wool quite this dark. This navy is so dark it looks almost black, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries. It just might look like a true deep navy color. Now, none of, none of this yarn is super washed, so I do want to take care of I am washing. And there's a tiny bit of bleeding, but honestly, that's not bad given the amount of dye that I put in, which again, I probably should have weighed. I'm now adding a nice handful of my favorite clear dish soap. Huh. This might be a piece where a simple pull um, would be a really good idea to help remove excess dye and whatnot. That is something that I would try at some point, so maybe using a really, really dark navy or some purple pop or something would be really useful for time with that. But anyway, I am going to keep washing these relatively gently. I'm glad that the soap didn't make the bleeding significantly worse. We just need to wash this a handful of times. Um, I'm gonna keep rinsing off camera and then put it through my spinning dryer and bring it up to dry. This yarn is midnight. Is it black? Guys, I don't know. 
I don't know if this would be a black or just a really, 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 really dark navy. It's something that might be somewhere in between. <laughs> I mean, here are some black scissors and the yarn looks darker. So the yarn looks a little bit more blue than what is either a black or a deep charcoal gray. So maybe it really is like a midnight blue type color. I used a lot of dye unspecified amount of dye that maybe I should have just weighed, but it was a mixture of a lot of things, mostly navy, and this yarn is without question the most saturated yarn I have ever dyed. How funny is it that these two skeins were dyed in the same dye pot? Now our yarn mop went in a lot later, and we definitely have some color breaking. It's mostly sort of this pale pink wash, but there are some like purpley hints in there as well. I think all of this residual pink is from the purple pop or maybe one of the other fluorescents or something that was in that batch. But I love that these were dyed in the same pot. <laughs> I really love how both of these turned out. And honestly, I would really love to do this marled sock base, not maybe with this level of saturation, but something a little more punchy uh, in the future. I love this base. The twist gives it such a fun element before you even lay on color. And I've played around with it using some more pastel things to get some interesting additional depth to it. But I wanna go and try some like super saturated stuff on it at some point in the future. If you would like to learn more about any of the yarn or equipment that I used in this video, you can find affiliate links to Knit Picks, Dyer Supplier, and Amazon in the video description. I have to say, I am so happy I finally used up this random mixture of navy dye. I do want to play with randomly mixing some powders together in the future, but I'd like them to be a little more balanced. This one was real, real heavy on that navy. So with that being said, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, uh, head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. You can find dozens of skeins of hand-dyed yarn featured in past and upcoming videos, um, and these will make it into the shop at some point in the future. Don't forget to subscribe, click on that bell icon to turn on notifications, like the video, and leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.